these two teams look at the other, sometimes they think they're looking in the mirror. They are similar in so many ways. Good guard play, leadership in the backcourt, and some guys down low who can get it done. Aluminamica, one of the key guys down low for Marquette, and of course, Zach Gore, the 6'8 junior, is a key man for the Zags. He will jump it up against Dwayne Wade, and the opening tap goes to the Golden Eagles out of Conference USA. Two private schools, this thing may come down to who prayed the hardest today getting ready. <laughs> Here's Scordell Henry. He penetrates, kicks it up high, it won't fall down off the iron, and the rebound, Anthony Reason, a senior swingman for it. Gonzaga. It's been a little quiet in this tournament. There's Wade with the steal. Then he took a foul, or did he? No, he stepped out of bounds. Tom Crean, 35 years of age, Mount Pleasant native, Central Michigan alum, great job, third year at Marquette. 35 years old, Mark Few, the senior member of the coaching matchup tonight, and he's 38. Bob watching great defense tonight out of the guys in blue. Opponents shooting 37% from the field, only 30% from the three-point line. They really get after you. Zach Gord, the rebound off the long three, missed by Steph. And a high-risk pass by Dickow never made it to Zach Gord. Zags get it back. Dickow lays it up there, and down it goes. It's amazing how he can drive, or he can shoot from way outside, and the touch is so soft the ball will fall in even if he misses. Zags open up in that 2-3 zone. Now, this is a look that Marquette has not gone against yet this season. Blanks and Long with a three. Jimmy, does this take away some of that great number of plays that Marquette has? Yeah, Marquette comes in, Bob, with 70 man-to-man -man offensive plays. Against this zone, they're going to have to have great movement, good spacing. Spoke with Tom Crean just a little while ago in that locker room. He said, I'm awfully concerned about our offense against that zone. There's Dickow. I mean, he can do it all. He can lower that shoulder, go by people with deceptive first step. He can finish at the rim. He's as complete a point guard as I've seen in a long, long time. Maybe since our days back in Salt Lake watching Andre Miller. That's how highly I think of this guy. Well, you saw Mark Few, 38 years of age, third year with his school, like Tom Green. Unbelievable postseason success. And here looking for some preseason success. Mark told us it means a lot to his kids to be able to play for the championship of this tournament in the month of November, get on TV, and have everybody know the Zags are still around. Here's Blankson driving. Stop. Harris picks it up, and John Harris showing a little senior leadership right there to tie the game. You've got to be aggressive against that Gonzaga zone. St. John's and Texas, in my opinion, were not aggressive enough. They were content to play catch around the perimeter. Expect Marquette tonight to attack that gap. Here's Steph playing with that bad knee. It's taped up. Dick out looking to penetrate. They've got the bigger Namaka out there on him on the perimeter. Here's Violet. Shot clock down to 12. Gord looking to face. Dick out looking to shoot. Shot clock at five. Got to do something pretty quick. Kicks to the corner for Steph. Just off. That would have been a beauty of a three there. Harris leaves it for Cordell Henry. Wade, instead of flying high, he pulls it up, and he's a little bit too hard with it. Remember what Mark Hugh told us before the ball game? Three or four times a half, we've got to get it going up and down, and that's exactly what the game's doing right now for him. A little changeup, and then a fastball by Dickow on the pass to Violet. You're so wise. The changeup is what makes this guy awfully hard to guard. Dickow never bounces the ball more than two or three times in a row in the same speed. That makes him unusual. It separates him from all the other point guards in the country right now, especially in that senior class. Sophomore Corey Violet, Boise, Idaho kid out of Bishop Kelly High School at the line. The coaches will tell you he's a little more athletic than he may look at 6'8", 255. He can move around some. He had a double-double against Texas, 17 points, 11 rebounds in 32 high-quality minutes. Violet a little stronger than Casey Calvary was at this point in his career, and he's also already a better rebounder. Well, if he turns out to be anywhere near the player Casey was, they're on to something in Spokane. 3-2 Gonzaga, nearly three minutes in. Wade for Namaka, out top Cordell Henry, the senior point guard. Odarte blanks into Wade. Four Eagles have touched it on this possession. And Cordell long with the three. There's Violet hopping a couple of times to pull it down. Back the other way. Blake step underneath for Zach Gord. Beautifully done on the break. 
by Gonzaga. Bob Gonzaga is the best passing team I've seen in three or four years. All five guys can handle catch and pass. Step forcing the steal, getting it back from Dickow. Gord open from 17. Zach with two in a row. Last year in the NCAA tournament, he had 12 against Virginia, 15 against Indiana State. Got in foul trouble, didn't have a big game against Michigan State, and that's one of the reasons the Zags got knocked out. He is doing it every night here. 7-2. Wade, too many hops, picked up his dribble, kept the feet moving. That's a travel. And Ronnie Turion will check in for the Zags. Where's what I'm talking about? This time, Gord is the guy that finishes. They can all run, and you're saying, well, that's pretty simple. No, it's, it's not. Not very many college teams, all five guys on the floor can run, catch, pass the ball as well as these five guys can do it. Well, one of their six men checked in, Ronnie Turioff, 6'9", freshman. Look underneath that. step, what a pass. And that's from Turioff at 6'9". He comes in, sees over the defense, and it's 9-2 Zags. Henry on the wing for Wade. They're gonna sit in that zone and let Marquette choose how to attack. Langston for Wade. Penetration. Instead of the 17-footer, getting it back. He got Dickow off the floor, does a 360. Underneath Namaka, tough catch. And a Gonzaga foul. That was good ball movement by the Eagles that time. And it'll go against Blake Stepp. Good ball movement, good people movement out of Marquette. That's what they must do against that zone. You can't get stationary. And you already see, as soon as Wade penetrates with that basketball, he's going to have at least two, maybe three white jerseys attacking him on the bounce. Aluma Namaka from Uppsala, Sweden, to Newton, Kansas, where he played high school ball. And then, of course, to Milwaukee, the home of Marquette. He got the first one. Gonzaga checks in Winston Brooks, one of their good transition guys, in number 10 for Marquette, Travis Diener, a good passer and shooter who spells Henry at the point and could also play the two guard. Here's what Diener's role is tonight. Not turn that ball over and knock down some perimeter shots. Marquette has not shot well as a team other than Cordell Henry. Travis Diener's got to knock some down tonight for him. Four and a half minutes in. Gonzaga, quick start. Step getting some good service there. They're putting on a passing clinic. And the guys in Spokane lead it. Three Marquette turnovers already. Gonzaga hitting four of its first six, and a lot of that, three of those four coming in the paint. Bob Gonzaga, they understand how to slip a screen as well as anyone we've seen in a long time. This time it's Terry off up top to Step. Step was actually going down to set a screen. His man helped on Dick Gow, and he just slipped it, went right to the rim, boom, lay up two points. That's one thing that concerns Marquette is their ability to take away that play. That little slip of the screen, take it away, not easy to do. Yeah, Dickow, the guard, Gord and Violet down low, combining for 34 in the semifinals, and they beat Texas 67-64. That was some ball game here last night. And by the way, the Longhorns losing to Indiana 77-71 in the third place game about an hour ago. How about this? We're five minutes into the ball game, and Marquette goes zone. Two, three zone. Haven't seen them from the entire tournament. Dick out. Along with the three from the corner, Aluma Namaka. The rebound for the Eagles. Wade leaves it for Henry. Namaka to Diener, so four Eagles touch it quickly. Wade gets Gord off the floor. Hangs. Should be a charge, or is it a block? Could have gone either way. And it'll go against Ronnie Turion of Gonzaga on a very aggressive drive by Dwayne Wade. You know, Bob, a defender can turn and protect himself, but that's what not Turioff, he doesn't do that. He gets over there and doesn't get his feet set and then tries to turn. Proper call. Mark McMullen of Kansas City, Dwayne Allen from Idaho, and local official Bruce Corson from Anchorage handling the things tonight with the whistles. Diener way out there, long. Gord up top, pulling it down, leaving it for Dickow. There they go, looking the push. They not only transition, they love to attack in transition. And Zach Gord now rebound at the other end, points five and six at the offensive end. He has great hands for a guy 6'9 to catch that ball on the move and then stop and pop. They're just so good on the offensive end, these guys in white. Henry Fernamica into Gord. That's a charge. Aluma Namaka putting his head down and charging in. 
his first personal. Bob, you never get Dick out, out of character. He's always in control of that game on the offensive end. He has great vision. This is a team that knows their role, and they're led by the guy that knows his role as well as anybody. He keeps everybody in the same boat, rowing towards the same shore all the time. Well, that's important up here. You Didn't find yourself out in the middle of <laughs> nowhere. <laughs> Dick Al for Gord, which we have been. Siberia is not that far away, folks. High off the glass, rebound, Dwayne Wade back the other way. Looking for a seam in there, Cordell Henry for three. Long with it. Whoa, what a tip. Is that Wade? Dwayne Wade's first basket of the night. He laid 30 on Tennessee, 21 on Indiana. Unable to knock that one down, Alex Hernandez, who checked in at the timeout. Deaner for Henry. Deaner for Wade. For three. Dwayne Wade, five in a row. That's only his fifth three-point shot of the year. He's made two of them. It's important for somebody other than Cordell Henry to knock down threes from Marquette. Coming in this ball game outside of Henry as a team, they're only 28% from the three-point line. That's not good enough. Well, they know they'll be better than that. Up top, Turioff. Sealed his man, Namaka, off beautifully. How about Ronnie Turioff? 12 against St. John's with 12 rebounds. He didn't score last night. They still won the game. Here's Hernandez. He and Turioff were wonderful in their first round game against St. John's. Dick out with contact from Cordell Henry. And for the senior out of Whitney Young in Chicago, that will be his first. Sunday Night Football, Bears, Vikings, the black and blue division. How about Randy Moss? Chris Carter and the Vikes trying to remain atop the division. Are the Bears, if they can take it, 8.30 Eastern. Mike Patrick, Paul McGuire, Joe Theismann. Coverage starts with NFL Prime Time, presented by Miller Lite at 7.30 Eastern. Between now and then, log on to ESPN.com for all you need to know about the NFL. Violet, stopped. Merritt was in there on that, and the Zags get it right back. So Scott Merritt, the 6'10 sophomore, checks in for the first time underneath for Marquette. Violet for three. Hernandez evidently pushed off to get that unmolested offensive rebound. That'll be number one on the senior from Valley High School in Las Vegas. Marquette does an excellent job, Bob, when the shot's taken, all five guys boxing off. They don't get a lot of rebounds, in my opinion, above the rim. They're a below-the-rim rebounding club because of the great position they get on. Seven and a half minutes in. Namaka, right wing for Henry. Diggs. David checking in, senior out of Dayton. Good role player on this club. Who's actually the best pure shooter Marquette has. He thought about it. Kicks it off for Diener. He's got a nice stroke, and down goes his three. Travis Diener, a freshman. He was an All-American at Goodrich High School in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin, a year ago. First time we've seen Diener, Diggs, and Henry on the floor at the same time for Marquette. alley -oop, Turioff. Contact on the way up because Namaka got him, and that's enough to keep you from getting too high. He couldn't sneak it over that iron. How about the catch? Great job by Turioff. He, he's the, the passer to begin with and gets just enough of a back screen. That's kind of that Kansas delayed break system where you run the guy to the front of the rim and just toss it up. This guy has been in the United States a total of nine weeks. And Mark Few is telling us today every day is a new experience for him. Saw his first snow when he came up here. And just his, uh, his upside is as good as anybody in that freshman class this year. He is really something. He's probably even seen a moose. Unlike you Unlike and I, like us. the hunt continues for a moose. Ronnie Turioff, a half dozen off the bench, and the Zags lead by three. Well, we don't know who did this. Gonzaga leads by three. Somebody heard we haven't found a moose. We've got our own mooses now, Jimmy. Mine's got his Gonzaga 3D glasses on. Monty and Marty, we have found a moose. What is it? Is it mooses? What's the meese? What's the plural for two? I think two the plural moose. for moose is moose. moose. We found a moose in Alaska. We have dose moose. <laughs> Cute little guys, aren't they? Only two guys in this uh, part of the country that have not seen a moose in the last six days. Uh, we're told that Lisa Jensen, who runs the Infinite machine in our truck, all those wonderful graphics, she went out and did some holiday shopping for us. Thank you, Lisa. Diener for Marquette. 
Diggs, good shooter. Down it goes. The three for David Diggs, his second tray of the year. Bob, I talked about this the first time that Diener, Diggs, and Henry are in the game. That's their three best perimeter shooters. That's why they're in there right now, spotting up around that three-point line. Five-second call. Great defense by Travis Diener on Winston Brooks. We've been hearing how good Diener is going to be. They would like him to develop into a Dan Dickow. Who wouldn't like to develop into a Dan Dickow? He needs strength, but he's got to the same kind of character in his game, I think. Entry, right side, looking for room Diggs. Kicks it for Namaka. He can shoot from out there, but he was off to the right with it. That ball kind of drifted on him. Looked like he didn't get perfectly squared up. Violet. As it left for him by Winston Brooks. Scott Merritt's got to get away from the basket to get out there and guard Violet because he can shoot the three. Although he is 0 for 8. They know he'll knock some down. He needs that first one to go in. There he is just inside the arc. Great look for Hernandez. Alex made a nice backdoor cut. First two for him. Out of their flex offense. They keep that thing a little wide and a little looser than a lot of teams run it, but they turn you over, turn you over, and end up with an easy one. Cordell Henry down to Merritt. Back to the basket. Jump hook. How sweet is that? He's only a sophomore. He's still a work in progress at 6'10, 245. He'll be real good inside for Marquette these next three years. Out on top, Hernandez. Eagles go man. Violet for three. There he gets that first one to go down. Four for Corey Violet. He's only a sophomore out of Boise. Boy, there's some good young talent on both of these teams. Couple of schools on the rise, no doubt about it. Away from the ball, looked like Turioff and Merritt were going at it. Bob, both the last two baskets for Gonzaga has come out of the flex offense. The first one results in a layup off of the shuffle cut along the baseline. The second one, a little down screen, step the shooter out, boom, catch, release, rotation, great result. That's what the flex will give to you. Layups, elbow, jump shots are extended. Wayne Wade at the table, you saw top of your screen. Cordell Henry just got his second foul. Tom Green may need to get him out of there. Violet stopping his dribble, taking contact. And it looks like Scott Merritt with his first. First foul. And Coy Violet's been pretty active so far. He had a 12-rebound game at Illinois when the Zags opened their season for the 76-58 loss. Dan Dickow gets a breather. Ronnie Turioff gets a rest. They bring Blake Stepp back in with Zach Gord. Marquette, a 3-2 zone team from the out-of-bounds situation. Ball was deflected on the inbounds pass. And a whistle as Hernandez was looking to score. That'll be number one on John Harris. And already 17 fouls against Marquette. Long way to go first half. And that's an area that Marquette has been great not better than their opponents coming to this ball game. They're averaging 11 more free throw attempts a game than their opponent. Now that's a sign to me of a club, Tom Crean's coaching, that they play defense without fouling. That is uh, not easy to accomplish from a coaching standpoint. Violetta half dozen, Turi off six, Zach Gord six. The big fellas getting it done for Mark Few right now, and the Zags lead by five. Zags go to man defense. Haven't seen but about 10% man out of these guys over the last four days. Harris with the swing for Wade. He is always ready to penetrate. Great dish. Odarte Blankson, his eighth grade teammate, on the receiving end of a beautiful assist. A couple of Chicago kids playing together for the team in Milwaukee here in Alaska. First time Gon Gonzaga goes man defense while they do. Marquette get the ball to Wade. Their driver makes a play for him. Yeah, if you don't get some help, you're dead. Here's Gord. Tough going in there, and it forced to travel. Good, tough defense by Harris and Blankson and Terry Sanders in there. Sanders making his first appearance. He drops the ball in bounds for Travis Diener. Gord could get worn down as this game goes on with a four-man inside rotation that Marquette's going to throw at you. 
Zagas only go uh, three deep on the interior. Marquette goes four. Dieter for Blankson. On top, Wade. To the wing for Odarte. Here's Wade against Blake Step. That should be a speed mismatch. They release Wade on the wing. He blows by Step. Dishes for Diener. And the three is off to the right. Marquette, good offensive rebound. Wade, high off the glass. Tipped up and in John Harris. That ball's on the rim, Bob. It was contact with the offensive player with the ball is still on the cylinder. Yep, Gonzaga bench angry about the non-whistle. And Marquette gets it back to one. We've got a good first half going here. Steph thought about the three. Kicking to the wing for Winston Brooks. And too far for Violet. We're going to have an overrule here, I think. Yep. Bruce Corson, he saw the deflection. Dwayne Allen was blocked out. So the ball stays with Gonzaga. Watch this. That ball is still sitting on the cylinder right there. Missed called. John Harris was all over it. Doesn't matter. Two points are on the board. Mendez for step. Dickow out of the ball game for an extended period of time here. He had played 40 and 39 minutes respectively. First two games of this tournament. Step missing. Three on two Eagles. Diener down the middle. Angles. Blankson. He stopped. Offensive foul. Odarte Blankson. The under eight minute timeout. Gonzaga by one. Couple of good defensive teams going at each other. Gonzaga, unbelievable postseason success lately. Sweet 16 last year, beating Virginia, Indiana State. Lost to the eventual champs. Michigan State got him at Atlanta the year before that. Sweet 16 with wins over Louisville and St. John's. And, of course, in 99, it all got started with that Elite Eight. Wins over Minnesota, Stanford, and Florida. They have really been something. They went to their first NCAA in 95. A first round loss to Maryland. They took something from that, and they've been outstanding the last three years. You know how I can sum that whole thing up? Only three teams. It's the second on the C straight. Sweet 16s the last three years. Michigan State, Duke, Gonzaga. Mm. Yeah, they're right in there with the two teams that have won. That won the whole thing. Michigan State two years ago, and then Duke. Great look. Diener inside. In trouble getting it out of there, John Harris. On Zaga back to man. Now Step is on Wade. Step is already injured and a step slow. I expect Wade to get that ball and drive, and there he goes with back cut. Yeah, back cut without the ball. And Step's got to hack him to stop him. I went over and visited with Blake Step a little bit during the pregame warm-ups. You know where he was? He was sitting on the bench. And I asked him, how do you play three games in three days? He said, I've really got to pace myself. My big problem is conditioning. He said, I just can't play very long at any stretch. Well, it's conditioning, and he also can't move quickly from one side to the other because of that left knee right there. He cannot defend off the dribble right now, and he cannot defend a back cut, which is exactly what Dwayne Wade did to him. Wade back on with the free throw. This guy really gets to the line, Jimmy. He talked about his 17 free throws against Tennessee. 40 in their first four games of the year because of his superior driving ability. You know what Tom Crean says? The only thing this guy doesn't yet have a grasp on is to play hard every possession. As a team, Marquette does that, grades out an A+. Dwayne Wade probably 8 out of 10 plays right now. He has that effort Tom's looking for. Tie game, seven minutes from halftime. Brian Kenny's in the studio tonight. We'll tell you later about the full menu he has for you. There's Zach Gord. Beautiful turnaround, little jump hook. He's averaging 17. He's got eight tonight, and along with that, he's pulled down a couple of rebounds. You know, and he set himself up with a strong duck-in move. He ducked in, got the defender on one shoulder, and caught that basketball and scored. Knows how to get himself open on the interior. A lot of guys are too lazy to do it. Good hustle out there. Anthony Reason. A guy we really don't hear that much from. He's a good role player on this club. An active athlete. We saw him tip that ball out of bounds with his good athletic ability. Shot clock. Sitting on 16. Yeah, you know, Reason and, and Hernandez both are guys you don't call their name out a lot. When the game's over, they've played their 10 or 12 minutes, gotten four or five points, four or five boards for you. Yep, and good defense. 
Sanders in the wing. Odarte Blankson. Mm. The three just rattled out on him. Terry Sanders for Marquette, keeping it alive. They got a fresh 35 there. No reason to hurry. And Wade with happy feet again. He is so athletic, he can't stop his feet sometimes. I like the versatility of Zach Dort for Gonzaga. You see him run the floor and finish, then he spots up in transition, has an awfully good release. He's an old-fashioned style player. Nothing fancy, nothing flashy. And there's a duck and move I talked about where he set himself up, got himself in great shooting position. High IQ. Mm, dropping that shoulder. Getting squared up nicely. Banked head for three. Won't go for Kyle, who just checked in. Uh-oh. Ooh, it's Wade, coast to coast. They couldn't catch him down the floor. Dwayne Wade with eight. Hey, and that's something. They stopped the presses these days in Milwaukee. This is a Marquette team that knows how to dunk. They haven't seen that in a long time. At the other end, Zach Gord, double figures for him. When you Tom get a green joke in the other day, so we don't dunk at Marquette. That's never been part of our game. <laughs> well, I'm telling you, when you get an easy look against Marquette, you've really done something offensively. You've executed, you've set screens, you've got the proper angle because, I mean, they take it, they, they, they take you out of your stuff. Another travel by Dwayne Wade, his third turnover. Well, the, this time, Dickow, the point guard, got caught underneath on the offensive set, and uh, the, the two guard doesn't rotate back quickly enough in time, and Wade gets an easy two points because of it. He's one of those Marquette kids attracted to the program because they play in an NBA arena. A lot of the kids love playing downtown Milwaukee at the Bradley Center. It's a big place. We have some better crowds now as these Eagles increase their following. Oh, that's big. Anthony Reason, who doesn't score a whole lot, that's his first three-point attempt of the year, and he rattled it right in. 29-24 Gonzaga. Diener with the answer at the other end. That's a half dozen for him. Well, we're seeing what the, the Marquette staff has talked about for four days to us out of Dean. He needs about another 20 pounds on him, and he's going to be a headache for Conference USA for the next four years. Kyle Bankhead out top. Sophomore swing man, a walk-on two years ago, red-shirted. Getting some time on that wing. Kicks it for Gord. Dick out. Diener way out on him. Look at the switch by John Harris. Dick out. Drives dishes off the hands of Ronnie Turio. A good reason. Again, this is one of the role players checking in off the bench, defending, rebounding, knocking down open shots. Marquette has the depth advantage in this ball game, so Reason and Hernandez, when they come in, they've got to come in and produce, and that's exactly what he's done so far. Anthony Reason from Ocala, Florida. Went to Vanguard High School, where a pretty decent football player by the name of Dante Culpepper applied his trade. You'll see him on ESPN tomorrow night for the Vikes against the Bears. Look at Diener. He's got three trays, nine for him. Marquette leads for the first time. Gord, a back cut there, and the ball eludes reason as Zach gave him a tough little bounce pass. Now Marquette on the run. The three-point shooting of Travis Diener, Eagles by one. Marquette came in shooting 40% from three-point range. 60% as Travis Diener tonight on three out of five. The last one with Dickow coming right at it. Well, we circled his name early in this broadcast because... Again, you've got to have shooters come in off the bench against this zone, and Diener and Diggs are the two guys that Tom Cream was counting on, and he's three for five from out there right now. This kid was recruited by a lot of good schools. Rick Majerus wanted him. Wisconsin wanted him. Bill Self wanted him at Illinois. Iowa State as well. That's a really impressive resume, and how good is that for Marquette, a kid of that caliber that they keep home? That's an indication of what Tom Crean is doing with that program. 325 first half Marquette by one you know what else is helping uh, Tom Crean is being associated in Conference USA because that is a league you're gonna keep hearing us talk about it but it is on the uprise just mark it now well I like what I saw in Louisville last Sunday night Rick Pitino's got them much improved there's a three David Diggs we told you what a good pure shooter he is and he's got two trays they've got five three-point baskets from two guys off the bench now Dick out straight ahead for Gord. Zach turning. He scores again. A dozen for Zach Gord. 
Gord almost reminds you of one of those guys that you'll, you'll see when he's 30 years old playing in a YMCA and he's just making those same kind of plays. Catch it, kind of slow motion, read the defense, get an angle, turn and score, trot back down the other end. Well, frustrating to play against. I see the likes of him at the Y. I'm getting out the knee pads <laughs> because he'll wear us out. Choose him first. Namaka for Merritt, falling, ball on the floor, jump ball. I think we're going to have an overrule here and maybe call it a travel, or did Marquette get a timeout? Merritt got a timeout out of that. Bob, good ball moving out of Marquette against that zone, and that's what you have to do. You can't get stationary and play catch. You saw that time the ball go to the corner, kind of got penetrated, kicked back out, reversed. You get that zone chasing the basketball, you're in good shape, and that's what Marquette did. Three-point shooting, not really a factor in that grinder they had against Indiana last night when the Eagles beat the Hoosiers, 50-49, but a big factor tonight. There's the timeout. Got his arms around the basketball, so he's in possession. Calls timeout. Good call. And you know, a perfect time for it, really, because with 2.23 before halftime, that's a timeout that Tom Crean would lose if he didn't use it. Well, I would have to say the Sullivan Arena crowd here definitely favors the guys from Spokane. Longhorns and Hoosiers earlier tonight. Indiana would prevail for third place. Missouri off to a great start at Quinn Snyder's club. And Dewan Wagner of Memphis highlighted with Brian Kenny on the Remington halftime report. They didn't get it away fast enough. You know, I mentioned it last night. It is not a lock for Dewan Wagner to be the newcomer of the year in Conference USA. As crazy as that might sound right now, you've got to give a lot of attention to number three in the blue jersey for Marquette. He's putting up great numbers in his first year right now as well. Yeah, let's talk in March. Yeah, we will. I'll look forward to it. <laughs> On top, Dick Gow from Gord. Under two minutes to go first half. Marquette in a dandy by two. You're not going to get Gonzaga out of character, out of rhythm, out of their personality. And it all starts with a guy with that basketball right now. You will not get him round. On the wing. Reason stuck by Wayne. Off to the races. Look out. Dwayne Wayne into double figures. Timeout. Gonzaga. What Dwayne Wade, he reminds me an awful lot of a guy I played with at Arkansas named Alvin Robertson. 6'4, tougher than nails. Understands how to stay down low. Got great active hands, and when he gets it, he is a jet from one end to the other. I mean, this is, a, again, 6'4 and about 215 is what he is. He is a load. He leads the team, and this is what impresses his coaches so much. He leads them in assists in practice from day one. A great feel for the game. And if you missed our comment about him last night, one of the big things he did last year as a partial qualifier when he could only practice and not play, he would go one-on-one -on -one every day with the great Brian Wardle, all-conference USA player who scored almost 1,700 points as an Eagle. It made Wade better. It made Brian better. And now he gets to take the center stage for himself as a sophomore, but that could turn into four years of eligibility if he keeps doing his job in the classroom like he's been doing. I bet he will. He's a, he's a great young man to talk to. He's got great balance and great body control in his game. Step for Look at three. That. Wade blocks it. <laughs> Leaving it for Diener. Getting it back. Looking to drive. He is never out of energy, is he? Going to the baseline, but he'll turn it over. And that's his fourth. Look at Wade. I mean, he fights through a screen and then quickly elevates and gets all ball up top. He plays hard at both ends of the floor. That, that's what marvels me about this guy for as young as he is, and he didn't play in games last year. Ten turnovers by Marquette. Violet for three. Well off to the right. Rebound. David Diggs of Marquette. Zach Gord falls down at midcourt. And that's because John Harris fouled him. Kind of an interesting play there that had nothing really to do with the ball. We'll look at the battle underneath between Gordon Harris. That's kind of where it all got started. As they go down the other end, oh yeah, just a little right elbow, bowling pin, knocked down, and they always get the guy who retaliates, <laughs> don't they? Those two guys play hard. They talk about it a little bit, and we're back at it. 
Harris is a warrior. That's how, that's how you describe that guy. He leads the team in that toughness department. Jimmy, I've been watching Marquette for a number of years in our Conference USA coverage here on ESPN and ESPN2. I see more chiseled athletes than ever before playing for this program. Merritt leaves it off for Diener. Back to the big guy. Soft touch off the glass. Gonzaga goes 46%. Marquette goes off at 54% from the field in the first half. And they knock down threes to the tune of 6 for 13. Great shooting by the Eagles. Jimmy Dykes talks about it with Mark Few of Gonzaga. Mark, uh, you're up against a Marquette club right now in the first half that shot the ball as well as they've shot it all season, but you're only down six. Yeah, we just got very stagnant on the offensive end. I thought we were taking it to them pretty good, and once we started standing around, they ratcheted it up a little bit, and we turned it over and gave them some pretty easy baskets over the top. Okay, buddy, good luck the second half. Thanks, Jimmy. All right. Bob? Well, there's the score. Marquette by six. Three-point shooting, huge for the Eagles. Travis Diener off the bench goes three for five. And a couple of threes for David Diggs, who plays seven minutes, scores six, gets a rebound and an assist. Great bench work. And for the Zags, pretty unselfish in the first half. 12 baskets, 11 assists. But they scored only two points in the last four and a half minutes of the first half. For Mark, you talk about he felt like his club was stagnant on the offensive end. And you expect uh, Mr. Dick out to have something to do with that the second half now. Zach Gord's been a marksman, six for six. Dick out, very few attempts, one of three from the field, 0 for two from three point range. He has scored only two points, three assists in 18 first half minutes. Doesn't take him long to do something about that. Jimmy, he goes right in there and shows us his mid range game. Here's Wade. He's got game all over the floor, but he misses there. Bob Dickock, 6-1, will get a shot off over Henry when he wants it, 5-9. Step for reason. And a foul underneath. Great service there by Blake Step on the break. I mean, can't they all pass that basketball? Look at that. In just two bounces, they advance the thing 94 feet. There's a third bounce. Boom. Right there for a layup. I talked about in the first half, but it is unusual enough to bring up again a team that can all catch and pass that basketball as well as they do. At the line, Anthony Reason, his fourth point of the night. His best output of the tournament last night against Texas. For Mark Few, he had four points, four boards, and assist. And that's number five on the night, and the Zags come out of halftime and score four unanswered points in the first 50 seconds. They also extend their defense a little bit just to slow Marquette down. Now they're going to have about 25 seconds in the half court to work against this Zag defense. They took one gamble. They, they trapped Cordell Henry at midcourt. Then they fall back once they don't get the steal. Wade on the perimeter. Taken away by reason on an attempted pass for Odarte Blankson. Kick out for Gord. Down to Violet. The right-hander ties the game. How about that for a quick six-pack? How to about, tie things up. Yeah, how about the position? That's a great example of scoring before you ever catch the basketball because of where you position yourself and where you get the defender. So six in a row by the Zags. Great entry pass from Harris. Blankson cannot finish. Namaka can. And for Aluma Namaka, that's a typical basket for him. Six points for Namaka tonight to go with a couple of rebounds. Blake Step down to Violet. Never got there. Through this position by Corey Violet. I mean, this is a club that they make a killing off of stepping in, that little duck move. They catch that ball and they boom, they quickly turn and get those shoulders square on you. Nice angle pass. Wade to Namaka. Around Henry, back to Wade. Thought about the three. Cordell Henry, a scoreless first half. He gets fouled on his drive there you see step again bob struggling to defend the quickness and the driving ability of another another player that that left knee swells up a lot we we're really surprised he played three games in a row in this tournament they didn't yeah. feel like coming in he, he could handle it three fouls and the knee get him bench time as they bring in alex hernandez he'll play out top with dick out cordell henry scoreless for marquette in the first half 
Very unusual for the guy who's averaging 19 a game. Looking to penetrate off on the wing, getting it back from Blankson is Wade. Cordell goes to the right wing now. Shot clock inside 15. Henry's the only real shooter on the floor right now for Tom Green. If they stay in the zone, they'll quickly come back with Diggs and Diener. Harris, Henry for three. Not real close. Look at Wade. He kept it alive long enough. Did he win the ball for his team? Nope, it's going back the other way. Well, he is a never give up. And his quickness and his explosiveness is so dramatic. You never can relax with Dwayne Wade around you. Three minutes out of halftime, Marquette by two. Board for Hernandez. Lots of Marquette traffic in there all of a sudden. Aren't they physical defensively? I mean, they talk, they stay down. Again, this is a club we're into the second half, and they're still fighting you defensively. Namaka after the work by Henry. And the dick out foul on Luma Namaka with the basket at the other end, and he'll shoot another. Boy, he's tough. A yeah, little, little bit of an NBA continuation call. Yeah. Namaka is the most versatile defender that Marquette has. You see him right here come up with this loose ball. I mean, pretty good quickness because Dick Al's got some speed himself, and Namaka runs it down and draws a contact and finishes. I think that's a good call. It looked like Namaka was just into the act of going up for that shot. He'll go to the line with a chance for a three-point play the old-fashioned way, looking for his ninth point of the night. One of the hardest-working players in Conference USA. He had 66 offensive rebounds last year. He will surpass that this year. Off his miss, Violet, the Gonzaga rebound, and uh, we've got Marquette up by four, three and a half minutes out of the locker room. Gord, foul from behind. How did Dickow see the angle for that pass? I'll tell you how. That, that's a great question. Dan Dickow plays the game, Bob, about two passes ahead of everybody else. He knows when he comes off that screen that Gord's going to roll to the basket. He had it set up when he had the ball on the right side of the floor in his mind, and he saw the result of it right there. Great point guards play the game ahead of everyone else. Dan Dickow is a great one. Zach Gord hasn't missed a shot tonight. Skins game. Tiger Woods, Jesper Barnovic, Greg Norman, defending champ Colin Montgomery battle it out for a million bucks in a Thanksgiving weekend classic. The Skins game continues tomorrow, 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific on ABC. It's really become an event with a life of its own. Cordell Henry running the point. By the way, a moment ago, foul number three on Odarte Blankson of Marquette. On the pass to the wing for Wade, a foul on Violet of Gonzaga. That'll be his second. Bob, you know that Wade is a driver. Right there he is. That kid is a kid that can catch and go by you on the bounce. When he catches it on the perimeter, don't run out of control at him. Don't run out high at him like Violet did. Go down and play him for the drive. Diggs in the corner. He'll shoot the three from down there. Wade to Namaka. Looking to face Henry. Wade. All around they go. And the three rattles in for Diggs. He went right side to left side. And David Diggs has three threes off the bench tonight. How about this bench? Diener with three trays. Marquette by six. Banquette getting some spot time for the Zags. Well, Marquette really good at tracing that basketball. You see that one hand always where that basketball is, trying to take away the vision. There it is right there on Violet. Look at the hands high, tracing that thing just like you draw it up. Shot clock at four. Dick out. Yeah, he's real worried. He's not going to get a shot away. Then he fouls Cordell Henry, and Tom Crean wants an intentional foul. Cordell was about to go off to the races for two at the other end. The under 16 minute timeout. Four minutes, 36 seconds out of halftime. They're digging it. Dave's got three off the bench. Diener's got three threes. Marquette shooting lights out. Marquette up six and they're doing it on the defensive end. Watch when Dan Dickow catches this basketball. Cordell Henry, he's thinking one thing. I don't need help. 
I'm going to stop this guy's penetration all by myself. And that's the attitude he brings and what the result because of it. He gets all up on Dick Al, stays right there with him, boom, and comes up with a turnover because of it. Tom Crean made a great point to me yesterday in practice. He said, Jimmy, too many times guys, when you're on a team that has great help defense, they forget about their number one responsibility. Don't let my guy go by me. And that's exactly what Henry brought to the table that time. And I'll add something. I think Tom Crean had a legitimate gripe about an intentional foul there. Wade, the turnaround, but it's a charge before the shot, evidently. You know, it doesn't have to be the last minute or two of a game for an intentional foul to be called. Right. Well, that's history. You know, and you can take my, my, my point another step further. It's just like we're going to double the post when the ball's caught. Will you lose sight of the number one goal is to not let the bad gum ball be caught there in the first place. Gord won't go. Harris got it. Well, we've seen our dead gum moose. Now we got the dead gum ball <laughs> flying all over the place. Keep it out of the dead gum post. We don't have to worry about doubling it up. All right. We know it's late, Jimmy, but it's a family show as well. Here at 9:13 local time in Anchorage. Just in case you folks back in the contiguous 48 are wondering what in the world we're talking about in terms of time out here. Hey, I hear the moose though. They they, they come out at night, so we got a shot still before we leave. Five on the shot clock. Diggs, four, three, hanging, contact, going back the other way. Or is it? Yeah, it is. Diggs with the charge. David's first. Diggs got out of his strength. Catch, shoot. That's what he's in the ball game for tonight. Catch, shoot. That time he caught, hesitated on his shot, and had to do something off the bounce. You saw Ronnie Turi off back in for Gonzaga. Freshman from Le Robert Martinique. Two consecutive charges by Marquette. They still lead by six. Nearly six minutes out of halftime. And just leaving it off for Winston Brooks. Digs out there defending. George's been shooting well tonight, so Merritt has to come out on him. Henry the same on Dickow. Shot clock inside 10. He hangs and scores. How about the mid-range game of Dan Dickow creating that opportunity? It was great defense because Henry cut off the penetration, elevated on the shot with a hand, but because Dickow High has a two or three inch height advantage, he gets the shot to drop. Here's Diggs, wants to get down to Merritt. Looking for his shot, he got it. He also got contact from Ronnie Turioff. That'll be number two. I mean, this is good. This is awfully solid defense out of Cordell Henry. He never gives ground one inch, but because Dick Al can elevate, he's a little more athletic than you think, and he's taller, he gets the shot off. Henry Scott did all Merritt. he could do. Merritt to the line here. Sophomore out of Wauwatosa. They love his skill offensively at 6'10", 245. What in the world? No, that's where he's from. So he's got some friends with a little complicated last name watching back in Bristol, the home of ESPN. A lot of folks who live up here came here, a big Air Force base nearby. A lot of folks just come because they love the country. And the fishing. What's and beautiful. the snow. Yeah. You know, our hotel is right on the, the busiest uh, skyport in the in the nation as far as planes coming in and landing on those skis. I guess that's what you call it. Busiest in the nation right there behind our hotel. Turioff. Will it go? Yeah. And a foul. A play that took forever to develop. And Ronnie Turioff made it picture perfect at the end. Turioff is an is a active guy when he's in the game. He's getting one rebound every three minutes he's played. And anytime he can uh, catch, turn, and just make a play on you, that's when he's at his best right now. Scott Merritt with his second foul. Ronnie Turioff completes a big three-point play for the Zags. Two-point game, seven minutes out of halftime. And Gonzaga showing their versatility on a night when their perimeter scoring not that great, they're getting it inside. And that was Zach Gord mainly 
in the first half as he hit all six of his shots. Here's one of the 70 set plays that Marquette has in. They isolate Namaka and let him go to the rack. Great job and great call by Tom Crean on that sideline. Switching to the left hand, Namaka with 10. 47-43 Marquette. Sherry off looking for Dickow. Cordell Henry working hard on defense tonight. Gord, little short. Rebound, Diener. He's been a three-point demon tonight for Cordell Henry to the pass! And a foul! Cordell Henry, a dramatic first field goal of the night. Dickow the foul, his third. Little guy's explosive, isn't he? I mean, again, he's only 5'9", but he... He gets everything he can out of that heart and size. I mean, that's what you can't see is the size of his heart underneath that American flag. Look at the initial good push by Diener. Boom, gives it up. Hangs in there, keeps his head up in contact, and gets it to drop. What a three-point play. He was a four-year starter at Whitney Young High School, Chicago. That's a really good program. All-American there. He's been a four-year starter at Marquette as well. Biggest lead for the Eagles. They lead by seven. Gonzaga had a seven-point lead, 11-4 early. Here's Hernandez for three. That sky ball kept alive by Turioff momentarily. Here comes Diener. Eight minutes out of halftime. Marquette looking good. Diggs for three. Swish! David Diggs with his fourth three of the night. And Gonzaga not calling a timeout. The officials stop it because the basket was hung up. And we've got the under 12 minute timeout. Tonight, the Eagles, 8 of 16 from three point range. They lead by 10. The guys from Milwaukee are shooting Northern lights out tonight. Marquette shooting the ball 56% overall tonight, 50% from three point range. Huge help off the bench from these Gunners. So we talked to Marquette today. The first thing they said is Diener and Diggs must knock down shots for us tonight against that Gonzaga zone. They heard those words at practice and took them to heart. Look at Diggs on the last position. Catch, shoot. Don't catch and do anything else with it. Catch and shoot that ball. Look at the points tonight out of those two guys combining for awfully good numbers. Coming in, Diggs was one out of four from the three-point line. He's now five out of eight. Diener coming in on the year was 4 out of 11. He's now 7 out of 16. That's very, very good. Dick out for Gore. What do the Zags have to answer? A dump down to Turioff. Gets his own. Jams it in. Ronnie Turioff with 9. He is going to be a load in that West Coast Conference for the next 3 or 4 years. Zags defending champs. They went 13-1. and one, A game better than Pepperdine last year. They won the tournament beating St. Mary's, San Diego, and Santa Clara. Then they went to the NCAA, and yep, another sweet 16. Diener can't drill that one. Rebound, Alex Hernandez. Talk about that West Coast Conference. San Francisco is another team to keep an eye on that league this year. They got two big guys themselves that can play. Daryl Tucker and Andre Brewer. They're about as good as uh, two guys that you'll see in that league. They're 6'11 and 7 foot. Dick Al for Turioff. A week from Tuesday, Jimmy and I are going to Fresno. We're going to see the Dons of San Francisco return to the networks and play Fresno State here on ESPN2. And, of course, Fresno, a great showing in the NIT. Hernandez got the rebound. And he got fouled. Take a look at that last uh, trip for Gonzaga. You're going to see the uh, Turioff operating inside. Now, he has the height advantage. He misses the first one. Watch. Get it. Boom. Quick. Gather yourself. Boom. Finish it home. You don't see a lot of guys 6'11 that are as young as he is that can catch it, Bob, first of all, with great hands, and then with quickness, boom, up and down on top of everybody before they jump. Man, that's three booms in short order there. It's hard to describe that guy's game. I'm tired just from talking about it. <laughs> Wham and zoom and boom and up and down. Great basketball, Batman. <laughs> Step on on top. 53-45, Marquette. Folks, we don't have any fun here late night, do we? Blake step in the corner. Little short with the three. Kept alive by Gord and rebounded by Marquette's Terry Sanders. On the wing, Diggs. They got to close on him. He's had open looks. He's hit all four of them. Diener's hit three out of five. And a miss from inside the arc. 
few moments ago, hey, we haven't seen Dwayne Wade in a while. He's back in there. Dumps it off for Diggs. He is digging it. Five out of five for the senior out of Northmont High School in Dayton, Ohio. Pretty simple. you got to make Diener and Diggs dribble into a shot. You've got to make Wade become a jump shooter in this ballgame if you're Gonzaga. Cherry off. Tough catch there for Winston Brooks. Looking to penetrate. Gord for Dickow. Guarding him, Wade. Dickow stops, leaves it for Gord. Plenty of time in the shot clock. It's now at 10. Wade guards Dickow. Look at him go. Quick release. Turry off with a beautiful offensive rebound for two. He's worked on the Kevin McHale drill. Get the rebound, keep it high, go right back up and score. That's what it's called because Kevin McHale did it better than anyone that's ever played the game. Marquette. By nine. Boy, what a good guy to emulate that would be. Yeah. One of the most fundamentally sound big men ever. Wade, out on top. Take it away, Winston Brooks. And then Wade fouls him. It'll be three on Dwayne Wade, who has not scored in the second half. More of the uh, two guys off the bench from Marquette getting it done. It's Diener to Wade. Now watch, Wade draws attention just enough as a driver that he frees up Diggs as a jump shooter. That is pure. That's a guy that is on in the shooter right now in, in the rhythm department. He's catch in his rhythm, balance, up and in. Winston Brooks at the line. J.C. Guy at North Idaho a year ago with nine points, eight assists per game. He's a Richmond, Virginia kid. First point of the night out of Huguenot High School there. Played at Howard College in Texas his freshman year and shot 50% from three-point range. He brings a speed off the bench for Mark Few, something that he doesn't have a lot of over there in the reserve unit. It's fascinating tracking the wanderings of some of these young men to find a place to play basketball. Here we go, 8.55 to go, 56-49 Marquette. The championship game of the 24th annual Great Alaska Shootout. Somebody will replace Syracuse shortly as the most recent champion of this tournament. Diener Blankson on the wing, Cordell Henry. They've done a great job shutting him down tonight. Diener, entry, Harris, tough shot. John Harris, a half dozen tonight, and Marquette spreading the scoring around. Here's Steph. He takes contact. It's either Blankson or Sanders getting him on the way to the rack. Tomorrow night, Brian Urlacher and the surprising Bears need to tame Randy Moss, Chris Carter, and the Vikings to remain atop the black and blue division. Here it is. Look at those Bears. Dub Bears, 7-2, and two, a half game ahead of Green Bay. Mike Patrick, Paul McGuire, Joe Theismann with the call tomorrow night. You and I'll probably still be on an airplane while that one's going on. No direct route from Anchorage, Alaska to Johnson, Arkansas. I checked every airline as possible. Not happening. You check the stagecoach? 58-51. <laughs> Jimmy and I'll be on the plane tomorrow. Talking hoops, folks. That's all we talk about. Here we go across the midline. A good steal by Gonzaga. Winston Brooks, if they score here, Things get really interesting. They're down by seven. Brooks to the baseline. Takes contact. Diener trying to stay with him. Bob Cordell Henry has done an excellent job tonight defensively on Dickow. Yeah, Dickow's broken him down some and hit tough shots, but I mean, he's been face-to-face, -face, check your breath defender all night, little number four in the blue. Check your breath. That's close. Winston Brooks trying to catch his, and he goes back iron too strong with the free throw. Under eight minutes to go, Marquette still by seven. Every tick of the clock gets them closer to what could be a huge step for their program. In the zone now, the guys in white, you've got to shade Henry, you've got to shade Dean. Those are the two guys you're concerned with as shooters. Everybody else back off of them, playing for the Oops. drive. A little behind Blankson. 736. Marquette by seven. A championship to be won here tonight. And it's not that we're looking forward to leaving this wonderful land tomorrow. But one of the most dramatic things you can ever see is sitting on the airplane after your takeoff from Anchorage and watching the Alaska coast 
roll by. I'll be in seat 2A. Jimmy will be in 32A. We'll be checking it out first thing tomorrow. And who will our champion be a little later tonight? This is a wonderful place, Jim. We've always enjoyed our times up here. Great people, great food since we've been here. And the state of Alaska is two and a half times the size of the state of Texas. And I'll get to Salt Lake the same time you will. You'll be in 2A and I'll be in 32A. We still land at the same time. <laughs> One a little well rested than the other, but that's okay. 58-51. What a good ball game we've got tonight. Two teams that love to play the game the right way. Yeah. You can't make mistakes against them. They capitalize. Step. And that is an offensive foul against Blake Step. Well, that was the call. The Gonzaga sure. bench can't believe it. I'm not sure it was an offensive foul. That's just the call. No, there's no way. Namak and moving. Yeah, well, well Namak and Wade both was right, right, riding from the side. Blake steps fourth foul. Beer for Wade. Namak thought about it. But Marquette, why think about it? Three seconds or four seconds into the possession. Yeah. They're very good at milking clock. In the half court, they'll run some good stuff, and that, that time they misfired. Still relatively early in the possession when you're up by seven, but you don't want to take yourself out of your offense either. Step for three. Went along with it, Namaga. That would have been good had it gone down for the Zags. Diener for Wade, getting his own. It won't quite go in. Ronnie Turoyal with the contract contact. That'll be his third. Wade will go to the line. I, I talked about Wade's ability to, make, to maybe lead Conference USA in free throw attempts this year. Watch, I mean, watch how active he is. He misses it, gathers it, jumps twice while other guys are watching him jump. Eight points, six rebounds, four assists for this little powder keg out of Oakland, Illinois. That's his 11th point of the night now. As he continues to develop as a... 16 17 foot shooter and as a passer I don't know how you're going to defend him with just one guy no, not quite oh Namaka grabs it Zach Gord couldn't time his jump the ball kept hanging up on the iron Namaka waited and waited that could be huge for Marquette they could go up by 10 here with a two shot clock just at 20 they've got plenty of time here Namaka for Wade. Now for Henry. Dickow watches him. Well, Marquette's had good movement in their zone offense all evening long. Shot clock at five. Diener for three. Barely got iron over the baseline. Back to the Zags. A good defensive stop by Gonzaga. 6.05 to go. Marquette by eight. Gonzaga hasn't scored in a while. They've been stuck on 51 for a piece here. Dick out, picked up his dribble. Three minutes plus on the drought. Now they give it up. Straight ahead, Henry. That check down the one way. And Cordell Henry with five on the night. Ten-point Marquette lead. Unusual bad pass out of Dickow. Threw it on the defender's side and got him a steal because of it. Cordell Henry fouling Dan Dickow. And Jimmy with 537 to go. We're looking at a Marquette team. They're not a high-risk bunch. They're not prone to blowing big leads. More on that in a minute after we tell you about Berman, Stuart Scott, TJ Tom Jackson, Sterling Sharp, Steve Young, Chris Mortensen. Get you ready for the day's NFL games, NFL countdown. Reports from every game up to the minute news and stats. Everything you need to know right up until kickoff each Sunday morning. To finish your point, Marquette's a club that they don't ever take a possession off. So now with mm -hmm. under six minutes to go, the possessions are becoming limited as we keep ticking down. Yeah, I think our point is they don't beat themselves. You're going to have to do something spectacular to come from behind 10 and beat them in the last six minutes of a game. Diener skips it over the top for Namaka. Later in the possession, he would have taken that shot. Shot clock at 20 right now. Henry against Winston Brooks. This is Aluma Namaka. 
Another skipper over the top. Diener quickly to Wade. Little jumper. Little short. Rebound, Harris. Right back up with the left hander, John Harris. How about the way that senior picks his spots? He's a former St. Louis Area Player of the Year out of Edwardsville, Illinois. Foul away from the ball. Harris dueling down there with Turioff. And for John Harris, his third. That was a, a great seal on the weak side by Harris. Watch him right here. He seals Gonzaga player on the inside, so he's going to clean up everything that bounces long. Everything that bounces out to that right side, he's going to clean up. I mean, he was boxing off by boxing the guy on the inside of him. That's You call that sealing someone. You expect plays like that out of a senior. They switch to the left hand, too, to keep his body between the defender and the ball. Turi off. That's 12 for Ronnie tonight, equaling his tournament best. He had 12 points and 12 boards against St. John's in their first round game here Thursday night. Overachieving in the championship game is the freshman from Martinique. I don't know if you can say that a, a guy that speaks five languages ever overachieves. How smart is he? Mui. A lot more talent than it's sitting at this table. <laughs> Well, speak for yourself. Here's Namaka. Oh, what a nice turn. Quick transition. Marquette keeps scoring. And Zagat cannot trade baskets for the next couple of minutes here. They've got to get a basket, then some stops. 4.30 in a moment. Marquette by 11. Dickow for three. Way long. Only his seventh attempt tonight. He shot it 17 times against St. John, Texas after 13 against St. John's and only seven attempts tonight. Here's Wade spinning and passing for Henry. Diener thought about it. 20 on the shot clock. Eagles can be patient here. Yeah, they're almost to the point, probably the next possession where they can just start making sure they're shooting that thing with two or three left on the shot clock. Henry slips by Violet. Bounces for Wade. He's going to elevate and pass to Namaka. Diener open for three. That could be a heartbreaker. Diener's fourth tray of the night. Diggs off the bench has five three-point shots. My only question about Marquette coming to this ballgame was consistent outside shooting, and Diener and Diggs have answered it tonight. Namaka on the foul on the violet shot. I mean, look at this. Uh, Henry penetrates, kicks it back out. They had about all five guys touch at that possession. It goes in, back out. I mean, that, that's a great example of in and out, frees up a three-point shot. Now, you talk about a Gonzaga team that can pass the basketball. Tom Crean's club did it to perfection on that trip. 30 of their 68 points from beyond the arc tonight on 10 of 20 shooting. That is something else. You know what? And against Indiana, Mark, uh, Marquette's team, Wade and Henry took 30 of their 60 shots in that game. Tom Crean's smart enough to know that that's not going to win throughout the course of the year, so a lot of guys got involved in shooting that basketball this evening. Three Zags just checked in. Step Hernandez and Gord. Violet gets them both. They needed those. The under four-minute timeout. 68-56 Marquette. The Eagles three and a half away from a championship. Well, somewhere... Mr. McGuire might be smiling down on this one tonight. Al McGuire, 13 years as the quintessential Marquette head coach. The national championship in 77. He also won an NIT seven years before that. They've had some great coaches over the years. Bill Chandler won almost 200 games. Hank Raymonds, who still is around the program quite a bit. 126. Rick Majerus coached there for three years. And the next great Marquette coach just could be the 35-year-old guy from Mount Pleasant, Michigan, Tom Crean. His weapons off the bench have been wonderful tonight. I'm not so sure that they're the third or fourth best team in their division this year in Conference USA. I tell you, a club that I like in that league that a lot of people aren't talking about yet is down at South Florida, B.B. Walden and Altron Jackson. Those guys are back again. And uh, the two guys that are that good and that experienced should win a lot of games this year. The Bulls of South Florida, Seth Greenberg. We'll see them a couple of times on our Wednesday and Friday coverage of Conference USA. That'll be cool to have some Friday night doubleheaders. Diener on the perimeter. Clock running down to the three-minute mark. Marquette would love to get it down near there before they launch one in this possession. 
Cordell Henry, a high pick by Merritt. Somehow kept control, then he trapped. Clock down to 307. They have enough points. Marquette has enough points to win this ball game. Now he's got to stay solid on the defensive end for the last three, and they head home with a big old trophy on their Step. team plane. Great look for Hernandez. Merritt the block from behind. Scott Merritt trailing the play. Got that big wing spin out there to swat it. Great pass, but look at the secondary defender. Merritt coming in from behind. That's what he brings is height into that lineup. Quick trigger, Violet missing. Marquette's got it. They can take it down to two and a half minutes or beyond with this possession. Leading by 12. Marquette's USA will be represented by Cincinnati at this event next year. Namaka off for Cordell Henry. Oklahoma State will be here. Villanova, Michigan State, Wyoming. Henry off to the left with that one. Namaka grabs it. Another 35 for the Eagles. Here on ESPN. On our first big Monday game in January at the Fit in Albuquerque. How about that? You expect that place to be going full force on that Monday night. Mark Few, third year, defending West Coast Conference Coach of the Year. An alum of Oregon, class of 87. Well, what a job he has done. And we were impl impressed with uh, Mike Davis when we got to know him up here this week. But you sit and watch these two guys break down, prepare. They do it the right way. They're Leaving they're, nothing to chance. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a right way and a wrong way to go about it in college basketball. And when we watch a practice, it takes us about 15 minutes to figure out what side they're on. These two guys tonight, they're doing it the right way. Mm -hmm. Alaska has meant something to the Gonzaga program, we should mention, before this one gets away. They won the top of the world classic up in Fairbanks in 97, beating Tulsa, Mississippi State, and number five, Clemson. Oh, Violet, nice tip. Nicely done. Corey Violet with a dozen. 70-58, two minutes to go. That was their first win ever over a ranked opponent, and the top of the world classic was the springboard for Gonzaga. The Great Alaska Shootout could be the same for Marquette. Minute 45 to go. Shot clock at 15. Namaka for Diener. They're going to have the ball in the hands of their good free throw shooters here. Cordell Henry hardly ever misses. He blows by Dickow, banks it. Offensive foul. Cordell with his fourth. Not a big offensive night. But what has he done with Dan Dickow? He's held him to 3 for 7 shooting, 0 for 3 from 3 point range. Dickow, a total of 7 points on the night. You know what else Henry has done is he's uh, kept that offense in rhythm and in flow and made sure that when he saw that Diggs and Diener had the hot hand, he got them the basketball. Dickow missing, Diener running, a minute 20 to go, and the Eagles are smelling it now. Wait, look at him. <laughs> Adjustments on the fly, on the run. 13 for Dwayne. He's been already named the most outstanding player of this tournament. Gordon Dickow will also make the all-tournament team. Dickow for three. Won't go. Final minute. Rebound picked up and a basket for Alex Hernandez. But Marquette says keep on moving clock. 72-60 Eagles. I remember the first night we watched Marquette play in this tournament. After about the uh, first timeout, we looked at each other and said, I'll tell you what. They play hard, and uh, I talked about throughout this tournament, not every college team out there understands how to play hard every possession for 40 minutes a game, and these guys in the blue, they understand it, and they do it, and that's what has them the championship right now in the Anchorage. Another thing, they're going to start the season 5-0 and oh, with wins over Tennessee, Indiana, and Gonzaga. To get ready for this tournament, they played Loyola and Chicago State on back-to-back -back days. Three for Dickow, ten for him, timeout Gonzaga, down by nine, 14 seconds to go. We'll take a break. There's a Marquette party about to happen in Anchorage. 4A. Tom Crean about to win the Great Alaska Shootout with his Marquette kids. 
14 seconds to go. Three possession game. Zags have to have a steal right away. Can't get it. Wade in the backcourt. Nothing Gonzaga can do. They steal it. Violet, three seconds, two, and Marquette wins the Great Alaska Shootout with wins over Tennessee, Indiana, and Gonzaga, shooting 54% tonight and getting 47 points from their backcourt. A great win for Marquette's program. They go 5-0 and on the year. Jimmy will be on the floor shortly with some postgame comments, and Marquette wins it in Anchorage.